Hi there, this is Heather with Autism Chrysalis, and I'm sitting here in the car waiting for my mom to finish with a doctor's appointment, and I thought I'd share with you an experience that she had recently around driving. And she's given me permission to share this with you. In fact, she encouraged it, hoping that someone might resonate with it. So we recently got back from a trip to Ireland, and it was an amazing, wonderful trip. And we both prefer to avoid a lot of the like touristy trap areas. We like to get off the beaten path, see the countryside, um, see more of like the, the real hometown feel of things, especially remote countryside areas. So we rented a car to have access to that. And in Ireland, um, there are a lot of roads, especially out in the countryside, that are much more narrow than what we're used to in the US. The, um, there's all these little tiny country roads that are just a little bit wider than a single vehicle, but they are technically two lane roads. And you'll be like driving along this road and come to a turn or crest a hill and you're like, waiting expectantly to see, is there another car coming at me? And sometimes there is. And when there's another car coming on the road, you both have to like pull over as far as you can into the hedges and off to the side of the road a little bit so that you can like squeeze past each other. It's um, a challenging experience. And most people in Ireland seem to manage this all right, but it's not what either of us were used to. And especially my mom had a lot of hard, a lot of difficulty with this because for as long as she can remember, she's always had a lot of anxiety around driving and being on the road. It hasn't, it's not to the point that it's debilitating, like it doesn't stop her from going out, but it's just that there's, when she does, there's this constant state of she's on edge all the time. And it's been like that for as long as she can remember, as long as I can remember. But about a year and a half ago, she was in a minor car accident. She got rear-ended by a drunk driver at a red light and um, she was okay, but it, like physically, um, but it really did a number on that anxiety. And it turned it from like this low level anxiety that she's always felt into often panic. And she's never been really comfortable with like the space of vehicles around her, but now it's like driving on streets, every car is too close and everything is too big and everything is a danger. And like driving on the highway when there's large trailer trucks coming by, she's like, she'll physically flinch. And sometimes flinch isn't even a strong enough word for it. Like it, it is a full body panic response. And it doesn't matter whether she's a driver or the passenger. Um, and it doesn't matter how safe the driver is when she's a passenger, it's, it's never safe enough. Um, so we were driving in Ireland in these these really genuinely two small roads for for two vehicles and not just in the country roads but like in Dublin in in other cities there's we didn't spend too much time in cities but there's a couple of things that we wanted to see and plus there's the airport to get in and out anyway so we were doing a little bit of driving in uh, in Dublin and um, through other towns and villages and whatever. But the, the roads are a lot more narrow. Like they, they do legitimately have enough space for two cars to pass each other. But there isn't that sort of buffer area that we're used to in the US where you have some extra space. It, it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot tighter. Um, and this was really stressing her out like seriously intense. She was just in this nearly constant state of panic. And she was 
managing to get through it. She was even the one driving, actually, uh, just by a quirk of... Um, anyway, just we were planning on switching out drivers so that we would both drive some, but we didn't realize ahead of time how much navigation would be involved, and I am a much better navigator than she is, so I ended up doing all of the navigation and she ended up doing all of the driving. So she was in this constant state of her nervous system being on high alert. She was describing how she, it was hard for her to even take her eyes out of a very, very narrow set of just the road in front of her. And so I was keeping an eye on a lot of stuff around because she was just really, fr um, like, super hyper-focused. Not freeze as in absolutely paralyzed, but to some extent that was the case. And after a few days, it was getting a little bit better, and we did a lot of little bits of coaching here and there, and just reframing like they're on their side of the road, you're on your side of the road, you can see the line on roads where there is a line. Not all of the little country roads have that, but there's a number of roads that do. And like, you can just see that they are on their side and if you're on your side, you're okay. And so she would like talk herself through it when they would, um, when she'd be approaching a car, like they're on their side, I'm on my side, they're on their side, I'm on my side. And that helped some, but then this thing happened about four days before we left. And I'm not exactly sure why it happened just then. She's not either, but something shifted and she, she realized they're not coming at me, they're coming toward me. And when that clicked in her brain, she was driving down the road at the time and I was sitting next to her and I was watching this and she said that and I could see her whole body just relax. It was a full body response and her breathing became easier and her shoulders relaxed and her, like her hands weren't as clenched on the steering wheel, they became more relaxed and she started looking around a little bit, tentatively at first, but over the next few days, a lot. And it was like, she described later it was realizing that the other vehicles could inhabit the same space as me, but they weren't out to get me. Like, they weren't coming for me. They weren't attacking me. This is how she's been describing it. They're just coming towards me. Like, they're in the same space. They're in my vicinity, but they're not a danger to me. And that has changed everything for her since then. And I've seen it and it's, it's just evolving more and more because there was something inside her that for her whole life, to some extent, so, at some points more and some points less, and especially the last year and a half since that accident, um, where there, like there's been this, it's like there's been this thing inside of her that's known that it wasn't safe. Like it was dangerous because everyone out there is out to get me. And despite extensive evidence being in very, very few cars in her entire life in which anything bad has ever happened, especially compared to the thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of times she's been in vehicles throughout her life. Like, like it didn't, that didn't seem to matter because there was this, this knowing that it, it was, they, they were all out to get me. But in this moment in Ireland, it shifted we were talking about this after we got home, like a week later, and 
and it's been so obvious that this has shifted not just that, not just driving for her, it's, it's shifted a lot more than that. This is one of those transformational moments in life where the, the, that one thing that shifts changes everything for you. I've had a few of those, a couple really big ones, like what I think this is going to be for her. It's going to be one of those major life transformational moments. And we we're talking about it, and I tried out this analogy on her, and she's very much agreed with it. I was asking her if it felt like someone had opened a prison door and she was let out. She said, yeah. And then she said, it was like these chains fell off and I was free. And I get that. I've had those moments. And what I think is going to happen is that it's not going to be just this thing. We're already seeing it in other areas of our life, but it's going to continue to grow into more and more areas. Since we've been back, she's really had no problem with driving or being a passenger. It's been so much easier for her. A big trucks will pass us and she's just continues chit-chatting. It's, it's no big deal. Like she sees it, she's aware of it, but she's not jumping out of her skin about it. She's not clutching the, the side of the car. She's not clutching the steering wheel when she's driving. In fact, a couple of days ago, she was actually driving um, near our home and another car actually did cross the, the white line in the middle of the road onto her side. And she just drove around it, just responded to it, adjusted her trajectory, and then continued on and didn't think much of it. But then afterwards, she was like, oh, wait, that just happened. Like, I just did that. And it wasn't a big deal. I just adjusted and it was fine. She didn't panic. She didn't startle about it. She just adjusted. And that's the difference between feeling cautious and alert and feeling in a panic about it. Like driving, you want to be cautious and alert. You want to be aware of what's going on around you. You want to be safe, um, to see your environment, to not have this narrow focus about what you can see, um, to be able to, to take in enough information that you're able to respond in real time to what's going on. That's driving safely. Um, but this, this level of panic, of, of startling at every little thing, it feels like it's safer because you're, you're always afraid and that fear like tells you that it's keeping you safe. But it's actually a much narrower focus on things so that you're not able to respond as fluidly. You're not able to, to adjust as easily in real time and to take in as much information it's actually not a safer way to, to be. But even the safety issues aside, just the, the calmness that I see in her now, she describes it as, as calm, as peace. She says uh, there's no other way that she can describe it. It's just, it's, it's calm and it's peace. Like at a really, really deep, level inside her and she's starting to make plans for things that she's been wanting to do for ages and she keeps trying to get herself to do and she likes the idea of and she keeps intending to but she's like trying to get over herself to make herself do these things and all of a sudden she's just doing them she's almost having to hold herself back from doing too much it's it's completely different now because things aren't coming at her they're just coming towards her. They're around her. They're not attacking her. And that is revolutionary. All right. So I love watching people go through these transformations partly because I remember myself going through them and I get to relive that a little bit. And it's also just, it's exciting to watch anyone, but especially this time getting to watch it in my mom.
It's really exciting, and I'm so looking forward to seeing what develops for her. And all these plans that she's already starting to do, and um, she's getting up and going out on walks every morning because she wants to to have more movement in her life, and she's not having to force herself. She's just like, I want to do this, and I'm doing it. And she's being less frustrated by things, and she's just... The, the parts of her brain that are creative have, have always been strong. That's been a, a, her, one of her strong suits. But it's like it's turned on on a new level. And it's so cool to watch. And yeah, it's just there's so many things that feel possible for her now. That were a struggle before. And I'm excited to see where it goes. Okay. Hi, I'm back. It's been a few weeks since I recorded that video, and now that I'm editing it, I wanted to give a quick update on how things are going for my mom with this shift. It is indeed one of those life transformational experiences for her. In so many small and big ways, she is making more progress and doing things that she wants to do more easily than she has ever before. Not to say that, it, that things aren't still work, they are, but it's not, she says that it's not like forcing herself to do it. She's wanting to do it. She's not getting frustrated by things as much when things don't work out or when she can't figure something out. She's more likely to just be like, okay, fine, figure out another way. And she does rather than getting super flustered or shutting down or just like having to, to leave it. She'll keep trying different things and it doesn't bother her as much. She's been in stores or events and other places where there's been a lot of people and crowds have always been a really huge deal for her. She'll go to extreme lengths to avoid them. And so will I, but for different reasons. And and for her, those reasons are largely resolved now. Like she doesn't mind being around a lot of people because she doesn't feel like everyone is out to get her, to attack her. She feels safer in her own skin. Um, she's still walking every morning, as I mentioned, and feeling good about it. She's looking forward to it. And she's making progress in other areas of her life. I'm not going to get into details, but things that she's been wanting to do, has had dreams of doing, has been trying to do, they're they're starting to happen very naturally and easily and and yes it takes work she's still putting in a lot of work to them but again it's it's easy work in the sense that she's happy to do it she's not fighting against herself she's just has there's a lot of things to do and she has to figure this stuff out and it's sometimes challenging or learning new things or new skills but she can, she feels like she can learn them. And that mental shift is huge. Um, and yeah, it's, this is going to be a major thing. It's already been a humongous major thing. And there's other areas of her life, like she's, she's dropping the even more layers of mask more layers of people pleasing. She's just being able to be more naturally herself around other people, to set boundaries more easily, um, to to work with pushback, to when someone gets a little bit upset at something, she's not taking it as a, like a personal attack or like she needs to to back off and she can negotiate that space and come to a place where they're, they're both end up being happy about it. And that's just amazing to watch. Like, yay. <laughs> okay. So that's my quick update. It's only been a, about two months since we've been back from Ireland, but things are still already huge for her. And over time, it's just going to, to snowball. It's going to be one of these upward spiraling uh, success stories. I'm absolutely positive of that. Okay, that's my update. Have a neuro wonderful day.